today we're taking a look at this. Before we do that though, you probably saw in the intro, the shed is a bit of a disaster at the moment. So uh, I got an idea to try something new before we take a look at this. So let's do that at a hyper speed and then have some fun. Start putting stuff up. Day two, let's get things going. This is not done, but we're getting there. I'm gonna bring in the rest of the stuff, and I think I think this is what we're gonna call it for now. I'm pretty excited, but we'll see how this progresses as we go forward. I just want to get this out to all of you so you could see what's been going on in all this space. There's still all of this mess to clean up, but uh, one step at a time, yeah. So what do y'all think of the new uh, backdrop for the show? I've been wanting to do this for a while and I'm super glad I was finally able to. But that's uh, not what we're here to talk about right now. We're here to talk about the CETA. The Close Engagement Dar Assault, I believe is the name, the full complete name of this. Jet sent this my way. I do want to get that out of the way to let you know that I did not pay for this. I was not expecting it. I just was notified that there was something coming in the mail for me, and this is what it was. Uh, so this isn't my full review. This is my first impressions after getting a little bit of time to play with it and uh, not take it out to games yet and things like that. I want to run this through its paces and put it through actual games before I give you a full-on review of it. But my first thoughts are, aesthetically, I really like this blaster. I really think they did they did well with the design in terms of how it looks and, and how it feels. The grip to me feels very nice. It feels comfortable in my hand. Um, I wouldn't mind if they maybe did some custom grips one because it looks like you can pull this grip off. And it'd be cool to see them just kind of do some custom elements here and there for things that uh, like a grip that may be a little bit more finicky for certain people. Certain grips may feel better than others, or even just aesthetic changes. If someone wants a different looking grip, uh, they can add that on there. Same goes with the stock, same goes with the pump uh, grip. All those little things that they've done here with this ecosystem allows them to do further embellishments in the future with after product, or uh, uh, I'm gonna say aftermarket because it's their market, uh, but after the fact parts essentially, extra stuff that you can get as add-ons and extras and things like that. I really think they have a good of opportunity for that with this platform. Um, there are some things I want to address in terms of feel and quality and whatnot. The plastic doesn't feel super cheap. It doesn't, it's not quite like Hasbro spec quality, but it doesn't feel like I'm going to break anything immediately. It does have a bit of a shiny finish that I'm not the biggest fan of that does make it look a little bit cheaper than it feels, which is a bit of a negative. Maybe had they done something to texturize this or anything like that, it just, something about the finish doesn't quite sit the greatest with me, but it's a minor thing. Now, I have seen various 
different claims in terms of the way things fit and the way things feel, which makes me think that there may be some tolerance issues with their mold or how the molds are being handled by the, the, the company that produces them. Um, Jnerf stock was super tight and no wiggle. Mine has wiggle to it. Other people I've, I've seen have had wiggle on theirs. Um, what else? The grip right here, if we're talking about some of my personal cons, the grip, I, I, you need to put a finger in the front to really get in there and, and prime it well. It doesn't feel as secure when you're doing it without that. If they had some sort of hand stop here or um, something that felt easier to grip maybe. But again, this comes back to they can produce extra grips. They can release files. They can, if they want to go 3D printing, they could do runs of special grips and things like that if they really wanted to. There are ways to fix this. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of it out of the box, but it functions. Um, I really, really like that the stock has a good length to it. I'm not even on the furthest setting for it, and this is comfortable for me. This is where I want to be, and I've got long arms. I'm a lanky person, so the fact that there's extra room in there for people that are even taller or longer than I am to really have a comfortable feeling, that's a great touch. Uh, I really like the function of being able to pull the upper receiver away from the lower receiver and get at the internals and make quick changes. I've already looked at pulling the spring out and doing like things like that to try some upgraded performance. But there's a lot of things at first glance I like about this. Uh, like I said, a couple things I am not the biggest fan of that I hope they would change. Um, the biggest thing for me though, that's been a downside so far, is the performance out of the box. Now this is claimed to get around like 90 to 100 FPS out of the box. I'm getting closer to 70 or 80 FPS. I've pulled the internals out, put them back in, like reseated everything, thinking maybe there's a, you know, something's not sealing properly. I looked at the O-ring and the O-ring seemed to be functioning properly. It's just something about my particular one. And again, this may come back to some of the, the tolerance variances that could be an issue. This is just speculation at this point. Um, maybe causing an issue, but I'm hoping I'm hoping that with some tweaking or a different spring or some different changes to something in here, when I spend some more time with it, that that performance will go up and it will change and it will get to a better point. They, I'm not as invested in the stock internals, the Omni internals, because that to me was them just putting those in so that they could sell them in their country natively because they have those blaster restrictions. So that wasn't the biggest concern to me. But I get that if you purchase a full blaster, you want that full blaster to function properly. So it's a bit of a, a back and forth for me. Um, there's a lot I want to go in with this, but I feel like I need to spend more time with it. My initial thoughts on it are that overall, I like the idea. I like the platform itself. There's a lot of things that I like that when we do a full review, we'll go into. But there's some things I, I'm not the biggest fan of, some things I wish they would change. I'm going to get in contact with the uh, Jet representative that got in contact with me to ask if there is potentially something wrong with my model, that it's performing 20% lower than expected. Um, maybe try and troubleshoot something. I'm gonna pull everything out again, open it all up. We'll figure it out and I'll let you know my full review, but I just wanted to get out a first impressions. My first impressions is overall, it's comfy. I enjoy the feel of it. I wouldn't mind a different pump grip, but it feels nice. So with that said, for now, I'm gonna go play with this some more and we'll talk a bit later in detail about how this feels. So that's gonna do it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed the new wall and uh, getting some initial impressions on the seat. Let me know what your thoughts are on both of those because I'm very curious. Uh, hopefully y'all enjoy this new setup because I'm excited about it. I feel like I've got some more space, but I've still got some work to do. So let me know your thoughts down below and I'll catch up with you all next time.